Good morning. My name is Dale Brubaker. Before I begin, I feel I should let you know that I'm typically a man of few words and don't necessarily relish the spotlight. In fact, this is my first time speaking to an audience of not more than 10 people of that in my first slide presentation, I might add. That said, the presentations I will be giving throughout the day are an exception, for I have a story to tell and information to share. In order to stay on track and stick to the storyline, I will be following a script that I prepared. There will not be an opportunity for questions and answers during the course of these presentations. So let us begin, shall we? I was born relatively close by in Hanover, Ontario, and spent most of my childhood years in the small village of Carlisle. In 1970, at age 15, my family moved to South Florida. 10 years later, my wife and I moved up to the state of Georgia, where we live to this day. I'd like to begin this presentation by sharing a few what I have determined to be bookmarks in my life episodes that I believe led up to an interest in our family heritage and ancestry. Recently, I've come to realize that I enjoy the challenge of investigative research, the process of connecting the dots and filling in missing puzzle pieces to our ancestral story. This presentation will recap one such investigative challenge, bordering on fixation, that culminated with a most noteworthy discovery that I'm excited to share with you today. To begin, my parents are Lloyd Brubaker and Delaine Calty. I have an older brother, Doug, and two younger sisters, Heather and Dawn. Here I am with my two sisters to the far left of this children's group photograph taken by my grandfather that took place during a family reunion in St. George, Ontario in June, 1961. I was almost six years old at the time. The reunion was held at my great uncle Ralph Brubaker's farmhouse. Ralph was the fifth child of Anson Bishi Brubaker and Magdalena Bowman, a family of 12 children, six brothers and six sisters. My grandfather, Eli, was the ninth, he may I add, an adopted child. This is my grandfather, Eli, at the age of 10, and his natural mother, Julian Bowman. Julian died at the age of 29, just a few months apart from her mother, Mary Ann Eby, both from influenza. During my childhood, I was completely unaware and did not fully appreciate the extent of my grandfather's interest in our family history. I remember he had a copy of the book titled History and Genealogy of the Brubaker Family in America by Ferris Brubaker Gibble, published in 1951. As a youngster, I fondly remember on occasion while visiting my grandparents' home, opening up the book to admire the colorful Brubaker coat of arms. As I got older, maybe during early adolescence, I recall reading in the same book, the section about the significance and orig origin of the Brubaker name. The section reads, there flowed in well-known times a wild mountain brook on its way to the adjacent sea, over which was built a bridge about 400 years ago, which was of so much distinction that in order to place it before the public and distinguish the brook from many other mountain brooks in the vicinity, the brook was named the Brookbach. Brook meaning in Swiss dialect, Buka, in English bridge, and Bach, a brook or mountain stream running to the sea. In earlier times, it was simply called the distant or remote brook possibly on account of its length from its source to the sea. 
At this brook and near the bridge stood at that time a mansion whose proprietor, to better distinguish him from the names of other persons of the same name, was surnamed Brutbacher, which name by and by became the family name of this house into which the earlier family was merged. This description made a lasting impression on me. The idea that there's a place and setting that gave birth to our family name has never ceased to fascinate me. In 1982, my wife, Denise, and I, a young married couple at the time, visited my grandfather, Eli, in Hanover, where during the course of the week, with my, father as, with my grandfather as travel guide, we made day trips to the outlying countryside and neighboring towns. On one such trip, we visited the town of St. Jacob's, where my grandfather was born, visited the farmhouse and homestead where he grew up and the nearby cemetery where his natural mother, Julian Bowman, his father, Anson, and stepmother, Magdalena, Julian's older sister, are buried. That day, it became quite evident just how much our heritage and family lore meant to my grandfather. Sadly, Today, my grandfather is no longer with us, and the homestead is no longer standing, being replaced, having been replaced by the main corporate campus of Home Hardware, a major employer for the area. I provide these flashbacks to my life more as self-reflection than anything else. I compare these moments to seeds that are planted patiently waiting for attention in their moment in time to germinate and see the light of day. It would be decades before these seeds would manifest themselves as genuine interest and passion for our family history and ancestral roots. It wasn't until 2014 at the age of 59 that I became more fascinated with my family ancestry not only the Brubaker family line, but the family lines of my mother and grandmothers as well. Most unexpectedly, I felt a wholeness when researching my other bloodlines. It's hard to describe. Indeed, researching one's own genealogy and DNA became increasingly popular during this time, most notably because of the internet and online ancestry sites. Upon studying the Brubaker family history more in depth, I became increasingly aware and appreciative of the numerous family historians and genealogists we as an extended family have had, who compiled and authored books that delve deeper into our various branches and code referenced family lines. I feel very fortunate in this regard. My grandfather's younger brother, Calvin, for one, became the designated family historian. In, 16, in 1967, at the age I am now, he researched and compiled a booklet titled The Family Record of Anson Vichy Grubaker. In 1975, the booklet, The History and Genealogy of the Grubaker Families of Waterloo County in Ontario. These booklets would pick up where Ferris Brubaker Gibble's book left off bringing our particular branch of the family line up to date, revised to include the generation of my parents and their children's generation. In other words, my generation. <clears throat> Aware of my apparent interest in our family history, my father gave me the small collection of books that he had inherited from my grandfather, some of which I have already mentioned that focused on our family history the ancestral story. I also acquired the wonderful book published in 1998 titled Descendants of David M. Brubaker and Catherine Bishi by Elizabeth Clapson DeBoer and Neil DeBoer, which, ex which expanded upon our specific branch of the family to include photographs and anecdotes, memories of those no longer with us.
and updated, in, and updated to include a children's generation. David Martin Brubaker was the seventh child of John Weber Brubaker and Catherine Martin. John Weber Brubaker is known for having made the trek from Pennsylvania to Canada in 1825 to settle in what is now Waterloo County. I am happy to say that Elizabeth DeBoer and I have had some wonderful email exchanges over the course of the past several months. As it turns out, she and her sister are also pictured in the children's group photograph shown earlier. Needless to say, I became more and more engrossed in my family line. I am of the D line, by the way. With these research books in hand, acquiring yet more materials, and by searching online, I was able to connect the dots, construct my family tree with origins going back to Switzerland on up to present day. I must say, the internet has been a wonderful tool for searching out one's family ancestry. However, I say this with caution in a word of advice, it's important that findings be based on credible sources or there is a lot of misinformation to wade through out there. I have often commented that, I, that the discoveries I have made are from piggybacking on the research and old fashioned legwork performed by others the hard way, long before the advent of the internet. My wife and I share a love for international travel and have a desire to visit as many countries around the world while we're able. Switzerland, because of its ancestral significance, one of them. In 2014, I learned that the Brubaker families of America were about to begin planning the 300 year anniversary, celebrating when the first Brubaker settlers came to North America. The reunion was to be held in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania in August 2017. My wife and I marked the calendar to attend the reunion and decided to postpone traveling to Switzerland since attending the reunion would enable us to gather information and insight from other attendees who had already traveled there. Indeed, during the course of the three-day event, we attended lectures and presentations and would meet many, many new cousins, some of whom I remain in contact with today. Well, at the reunion, Denise and I just happened to bump into my first cousin once removed, Pete Brubaker, and his wife, Aona, from here in, in Kitchener. Pete had given the Brubaker families of America a framed family reunion photograph that took place here in Kitchener in 1923, 99 years ago. Pete's father was Cleason Brubaker, the youngest child of Anson. And Magdalena. Both my grandfather Eli and Pete's father Cleason, with their respective wives Elsie and Luella, are pictured in the group photograph, along with other relatives and extended Brubaker family members. I find it remarkable that I am here attending a noteworthy Brubaker reunion in the same location almost 100 years later. I believe this frame photograph has returned home to be on display at this reunion. Getting back to the 2017 reunion. It was during one presentation in particular given by Martin Brubaker that I learned of the earliest known reference to a Brubaker living in what is now the small hamlet called Kittenmuley, located at a short distance inland from the east side of Lake Zurich. As part of his presentation, Martin shows slide images of what he had understandably determined to be the bridge in Brook, from where our name originated, a brook known today as Mislibach. Quite underwhelming, actually, not much more than a small stream being channeled through a low covered drainage culvert of sorts. This brook, located a short distance and within sight, 
of a small community of Kitmuley just up the road. It is only recently, after having watched the video recording of Martin's slide presentation from the reunion, that I came to understand that Martin had identified and determined the significance and location of Kitmuley to our ancestral story. Martin had provided some invaluable dots to connect, and I would eventually build upon what he had researched and set in place. At this point, I should mention that I have a penchant for using the computer app Google Earth as a means to become visually familiar with locations around the world. I rout routinely use the program whenever my wife and I are in the process of planning our upcoming travels. I find it wonderful to be able to zoom across the globe to hover above a destination and view locations from an aerial vantage point or on the ground as a street view. Soon after the family reunion in late 2017, using the information presented by Martin Grubaker, I launched Google Earth and visited Kitmuley in the group nearby called Muslibach. There's a main road that runs through Kitmuley and over the Muslibach called Kapelstrasse. Just up the road, a short distance, traversed by the same road, I happened upon yet another brook called the Chaplebach. Most curious, there was a housing development close by with streets bearing our Rubica name. And just up from this development, a field with a variation of our name as well, with the Chaplebach flowing alongside both locations. Could the Chapley Bach be another possible location for our bridge in Brook? It seemed to make sense to me. Needless to say, I became focused, if not fixated on this possibility, and it became a mission of mine to locate the legendary bridge in Brook before traveling to Switzerland the following year. Before I continue, here's a map graphic of the housing development, which coincides with the aerial view just shown. I have labeled it accordingly with the street names in Brubach and Brubach Beck. I will be using this map as a compass rose, if you will, as a means to better orient you to some of the views that will follow. And speaking of orientation, this might be as good a time as any to zoom out a little to give you a better lay of the land. The Chaplebach ultimately merges into another brook called Dorfbach Ehrenbach, which in turn flows through the town of Ehrenbach before emptying into Lake Zurich. During the spring of 2018, my wife and I began to make travel plans to visit Alsace, France and areas of Switzerland. The last destination of our trip, the area around Lake Zurich, where the Brubaker story begins. I might add that over the years, Brubaker family heritage tours have been conducted to this and other areas of Switzerland. Indeed, one such tour was in the process of being organized for the upcoming summer. Having met the organizer, Lois Ann Mast, at the family reunion the previous summer, she provided me with the contact information for Christian Brubacher. Christian, who has since passed, and his wife, Meta, did an adventure tour just outside of Zurich. Christian, the most knowledgeable resource and valuable connection, had over the years been lined up to graciously guide visitors to sites in the area having Brubaker family history and significance. During my correspondence with Christian, we discussed the areas and points of interest where he would take us upon arriving in Switzerland. Periodically, I would bring up my quest about locating the mythical bridge in Brook, to which Christian was somewhat skeptical, but tended to humor me. Here is an email exchange that I had with Christian 
in February of 2018, one of many we would have over the next several months. Most evident in my emails that I continue to be fixated on the areas around the housing development about the significance of the names for the street Kapelstrasse and the Brook Chapelbach. Christians replied back, I'd like you to take particular note of the information Christian gave about our earliest known ancestor. I found it amazing that in 1333, there's documentation that a Heinrich von Brubach lived with his sister in Brightville, a mill village that today is known as Kittenmuley. Taking this bit of information, I began searching online for Heinrich Brubach in Brightville, 1333. Through the use of other key search words and several attempts, I happened upon the website developed by a Rolf Fister, who apparently had researched and written about the Brubaker ancestry. Take note of the information, take note of the hint of information within this, this link referencing Heinrich von Brubach and his sister. By chance, I would also discover that Rolf was on Facebook as well. I sent a trial message introducing myself to Rope using both email and Facebook and received an email reply back confirming that he indeed was this Rope Fister. Rope and I hit it off right away and it became immediately apparent that we shared a passion for genealogy and the research involved. This would be the beginning of a relationship that would involve close to 200 email exchanges, 182 to be exact, over the course of the next several months, from March 2nd to April 28th, 2018. Because of the language barrier, Rolf speaking only Swiss German and I only English, I would first compose an email in English, translate it to German using the online tool Google Translate, then append it to the body of my email to Rofe. Rofe and I would go on to have email exchanges that focus primarily on the Brubacher and Fister ancestry. What is most intriguing and remarkable about Rofe, myself, and by extension, all of us here, is the ancestral connection we share. In 1623, one of our earliest ancestors, Peter Brubacher, married Anna Pfister, from whom their offspring would ultimately be the beginning of our alphabet-coded family lines. As it turns out, those ancestral lines stems from Anna's younger brother, Rudolf Pfister. I find it wonderful that Rolf and I have essentially come together, full circle, by way of an ancestral marriage. I will be talking more about Peter and Anna during my presentation this afternoon. In one of my first email exchanges with Rolf, I expressed my interest in locating the legendary Brubaker Bridge in Brook, presenting my reasoning why the Chapley Bach could once have been the elusive Brubach. On numerous occasions during the course of our email exchanges, I would continue to bring this quest this fixation front and center. Here, for example, is an excerpt taken from a later email sent to Rolf. Oops. I, can, I continue to be intrigued by the housing development off of Kapolistrasse. Obviously, the fact that one of the streets of this housing development bears the name in Brubach is indicative of something. Again, as I mentioned before, I like to believe that this location with Brook Chapleybach running alongside it could be the mythical brook described in my Brubaker family genealogy records. I simply, maybe not so simple, like to get a sense of how this parcel of land changed out over the centuries.
In the same email, I was intrigued by what appeared to be rock work. Maybe the foundation remains of an old, older structure from years past. Perhaps a roadside chapel from which the street Kapelistrasse and the brook Chapelbach get their current names. Or even wishful thinking on my part, the remnants of the mansion of Brubaker legend. Then, on April 23rd, 2018, at 808 in the morning Eastern Standard Time, six hours ahead in Switzerland. I received an email from Rolf with information that he had located in the State Archives of Zurich, documenting a pastor dispute between the peasantry of Gusnach and the peasantry of Erebach. I find it amazing that this archival document was recorded on April 13th, 1418, exactly 600 years prior to the month, almost to the day. The dispute involved the pasture area located between two mountain brooks, the Hesleybach and the Brugbach. As translated, a translated excerpt from the document reads, the pasture of Erlenbach, which is open to them for use, when it is located in the uncultivated land, extends from the Brugbach down to, down to the footpath that runs from the Hesleybach through the field between the Hesleybach and Brugbach and to the estate of Ustler and from the meadow of Verli Ustler in the direction of the city of Zurich. This discovery was clearly most significant because now we had in hand archival documentation that mentions an actual brook and water source called Brugbach. During the course of the day, Rolf and I continued to exchange emails, some of which involved deciphering and clarifying the terminology as read in the archival document. I would follow up by sharing a hand-drawn map as to how I visualized the pasture area under dispute. Even though I have tried to refrain from sharing more of the emails Rob and I had over the course of a couple months, I feel it's important to invite you into the moment to share the excitement about what was about to ensue. At times, a dialogue occurring back and forth with Rob in real time. Caught up with the discovery that we now had evidence of a mountain brook called the Brugbach, Rolf and I were overlooking an obvious clue that had been right in front of us. The fact that the water source, the Hesleybach, still goes by that name today. Through our email exchanges, Rolf would often send me information using old maps from a book compiled and published in 1667 by cartographer Hans Conrad Geiger. I would like to share a small section from a larger and grander map that focuses in on the area of the Chapleybach, the housing development, the street name in Brubach, the mill village of Pregville, now Kittenmuley, and the coastal lake towns of Kusnak and Ehrenbach. Most all of these locations you should be familiar with at this point. This map will be most informative to the rest of the story. As a follow-up to my hand-drawn map, Rolf emailed me an old map that he had marked up of a broken water source that he determined to be Brugbach based on their arch archival document. <clears throat> Following is part of our email exchange that transpired in real time. Okay, I've been studying the map stench and have compared it with a more current one. As I mentioned earlier, and you obviously know this, the Hesley box still exists by that name today. On the map you sent, the Hesley box is to the right of what you have determined to be Brugbach. Today, that water source goes by the name Kuznacher Dorfbach. 
not like the water source called Dorfbach Edermach. Unless you know for certain, you have some other maps to confirm that Kuznacher Dorfbach was once Brubach, one could argue that the Dorfbach Edermach has a similar relationship to Hesleybach as well, only that it is south rather than north of Hesleybach. And we also know there is historic evidence of the Brubach name in close to Kitmuley, the Chaplebach, and by extension, the Dorfbach Edermach. Almost immediately, I received an email back from Rolf, arriving at the same conclusion, followed by a revised map. This discovery and awesome development left us both understandably elated and speechless. Now, in the wee hours of the next day for Rolf, we brought our email exchange to a close and wished each other a good night. The next morning, I woke up to some follow-up maps from Rove, indicating the location, the past pastor dispute, and the confirmed location of the legendary bridge in Brook. I, in turn, sent a labeled aerial view and map of the same. Still in the moment, Rope and I would take his time to formally celebrate offering each other a toast in honor of this mo no most noteworthy discovery. Five days later, on April 28th, I sent an email to Christian Brubacher, copying key members of the Brubaker families of America. The email subject line read, a most exciting discovery and announcement in which I shared my correspondence with Rolf Fister and our discovery of the elusive location of our ancestral bridge in Brook. A couple of days later, I received an email from Christian offering, congratulations, you got what you've been looking for for quite some time now, your mythical and namesake Brook one kilometer northwest from Kittenwood. I would like to thank you all for bearing with me during this presentation. If you'd like to take a short break to stretch your legs and perhaps use the restroom, I will then continue with some photographs taken from my travels to the areas presented this morning. I will be showing travel photographs of the mountain brook, now called the Chapleybach, the current bridge, the housing development, Brookbach Field, Kit Muley, and the presumed area of the pasture dispute, and more. So maybe see you back here in 15 minutes. <laughs> 